It was quite a shock when the Securities and Exchange Commission came for Cardano 88, labeling it as a security. Many tried to disagree with this action offering valid reasons, yet futile efforts were recorded. But will we continue to live in the shock for the rest of our lives? It's time to move forward, and the fourth most popular country in the world might have cleared the thorns on our path. In early June, Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, and David Schwartz, Ripple's CTO, reacted to the SEC's argument behind its classification of ADA as a security in the Binance and Coinbase lawsuits, and it was quite a heated one. Both individuals challenged the SEC's position in response to tweets from Bill Morgan, a pro-XRP attorney. Remember that the SEC recently filed lawsuits against Binance and Coinbase, accusing them of fostering unregistered securities transactions. The commission included ADA on the list of alleged securities in both cases. However, taking to Twitter, Bill Morgan shot eyebrows at the validity of the SEC's argument. The lawyer argued that the SEC's claim fails to consider the nature of technological progress and the innovation in the crypto industry. His tweet read, Why does the SEC think that hashtag ADA is a security? Imagine you create a product, and then you should add some feature or capability that makes it better. This happened a lot in the history of smartphones. You announce this improvement and how it will increase demand for your product. He drew a parallel with the history of smartphones, where manufacturers continuously enhance their product with new features and capabilities. Using an excerpt of the SEC's complaint, Morgan pointed out that the agency argues that ADA is a security because IOHK improved the Cardano blockchain and released blogs to inform the public. Also, Morgan emphasized that sharing information about product improvements does not supposedly make the product a security. From his perspective, the same logic should apply to all ongoing developments of the Cardano blockchain. He pointed out that the SEC's allegations primarily revolve around the second market sales on Coinbase after ADA's listing in March of 2021, not the initial coin offering that took place four years ago. So when the situation surrounding ADA's ICO came up, Hoskinson chimed in to provide clarification. He hammered that the ICO occurred in Japan and did not involve direct sales of ADA. Instead, it utilized vouchers, targeted marketing in Japanese, and was priced in yen and bitcoin, with no participation from Americans. He said this before in an interview. Coinbase didn't list ADA until March of 2021, Epoch 251, four years after the ICO in Japan concluded, a Twitter user commented. Charles Hoskinson added, The financing was done in Japan. No ADA was sold, only vouchers. Marketing was in Japanese, priced in yen and bitcoin. No one from the United States participated. ADA launched in 2017 as an airdrop two years after the voucher sale. The facts might be inconvenient to the SEC, but they are facts. Hoskinson further confirmed that all purchases of ADA made by U.S. citizens were about secondary sales four years after the ICO. This suggests that Americans only bought ADA on the secondary market and had no connection with the ICO in Japan. So many facts to defend a single project. Bill Morgan also pointed out that the SEC's jurisdictional reach does not extend to the ICO due to its location and nature. He stressed that despite the reality of the situation, the agency alleged that ADA became a security through its availability on US-based exchanges. For him, this was absurdity at its peak. David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple, joined the discussion, pointing out the SEC's stance on the ICO transactions and secondary sales. He posited that the SEC's position might be that the ICO constituted a securities offering despite one outside their jurisdiction due to the lack of U.S. ties. He said, I guess their argument must be the ICO was a securities offering, just not an SEC issue because of no U.S. nexus. But then I thought it was their position that secondary sales were exempt. The ICO transactions didn't take place on exchanges, so what's the investment contract? Regardless of these arguments, things are slipping out of control, not just for Cardano, but for other major cryptocurrencies. Currently, nothing has changed. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other major cryptocurrencies have crashed since the Metaverse digital world hype through 2021 helped push them to all-time highs. The Bitcoin price has struggled to regain its COVID-era momentum this year following its 2022 downturn, partly due to technology companies pushing back or abandoning their plans for Metaverse development altogether and amid a Federal Reserve-led round of global monetary tightening, though China is currently reconsidering this particular decision. Now, as the chief executive of major Bitcoin and crypto exchange Binance teases when he expects the next crypto price bull run to begin, a leaked European Union draft document has shown the trading bloc wants to create a system of global governance to manage the unprecedented opportunities of virtual worlds. The leaked draft read, 
Virtual worlds bring unprecedented opportunities in many societal areas. This technological shift also involves new forms of global governance, such as crypto-based decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs for short. Cryptocurrencies including top 10 coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Cardano, Dogecoin, Solana, Tron, and Litecoin have seen their fortunes become partly pegged to sentiment around the idea of a metaverse as traders and investors try to presume which cryptocurrencies could form the basis of a digital economy or be used to create artificial scarcity in virtual worlds. Well, this is just proof that here in the crypto industry, anything can happen, and there's no guarantee for any set expectation. And for just a few weeks, it has become increasingly easy to believe that in its desire to take proactive steps in the wake of the collapse of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX, the regulatory and administrative state of the United States of America is trying to kneecap all of crypto as a technological project within its borders. Just in case you didn't know, Bitcoin, Coinbase, Binance, and more are all fighting for their lives as the United States Security and Exchange Commission does everything in its power to eradicate the current cryptocurrency system in the United States and replace it with ones it deems more fair to the American public. From the start, the US government was not in support of cryptocurrencies, so it may have found a chance to finally eradicate crypto using the SEC. Since 2009, cryptocurrency has taken the world by storm and caught the attention of millions of investors who have an interest in digitizing their assets. At first glance, this was convenient to many, but as SEC Chair Gary Gensler has been arguing, the system is so deeply flawed that the American public doesn't even realize the risk it is taking. From a closer perspective, the SEC has found issues with how large cryptocurrency corporations manage investors' money. As Gensler argued in his interview with CNBC, the investing public is culpable of many security laws that regulate how their money is invested and managed in conventional markets such as the New York Stock Exchange. In a nutshell, the mission of the SEC is to bring these corporations into agreement with these securities, but they are running into problems when it comes to the execution of these goals. But one of the main reasons for this very strong push to bring these corporations into compliance is the misuse of investor funds. And well, that is a valid reason. Many of these digital currency databases commingle investor funds, which creates a huge liability issue that would not be allowed in the conventional investment world. Nevertheless, amid these disturbing occurrences and pop-ups, Cardano 88 has seen a green light from the fourth most populous country, Asia. Cardano is finding opportunities in other regions where governments are embracing cryptocurrencies with open arms. Emphasis on open arms. After encountering gushing amounts of sell pressure due to the SEC's classification of the asset as an unregistered security, Cardano finds itself being welcomed in different parts of the world as countries look to become more crypto-friendly. Following Hong Kong's recent implementation of crypto-friendly laws that allowed investors to trade select cryptocurrencies, including Cardano, Indonesia follow suit. It is the fourth most populous country aiming to establish itself as a crypto hub by listing over 450 crypto assets, including Cardano ADA, Ethereum ETH, Solana Sol, Polygon Matic, and more as commodities. A tweet from Wellchart read, Breaking, Indonesia market's regulators have declared Cardano native token ADA as a commodity. Therefore, according to the regulatory framework established by BAPEPTI, the Indonesian equivalent of the SEC, investors in Indonesia can now trade several crypto assets in the country. BAPEPTI evaluated various tokens based on utility, functionality, and intrinsic value within their respective blockchain ecosystems, prioritizing clarity, investor protection, and promoting innovation and technological advancement in cryptocurrency. Perhaps all the things that the SEC refused to see. Indonesia's listing of Cardano marks a significant milestone. It offers a myriad of growth prospects for the token, as it stands in stark contrast to the SEC's crypto crackdown in the US. We might be told not to expect much from this development, but the bubbles of excitement within many cannot be resisted. Finally, Cardano has a place to call home. But that's going to do it for today's video. Make sure you click on the subscribe notification buttons, and we'll see you in the next video.